afternoon, Heartland. Greetings from Washington, D.C. Uh, my name is John Heather with Arizona State University, teaching at the Hainan University, Arizona State University International Tourism College in Hainan. Uh, I'm obviously home teaching online until uh, things get a little bit better. But during my uh, teaching and uh, exploration of the free trade port and booming tourism industry for Hainan, I came across the U.S. Uh, Heartland China Association, the Way Forward uh, webinar series, and was really, really impressed and excited. So I sent them a note and said, you guys need to check out Hainan. It really is the most exciting place in the world right now, as far as I'm concerned, Great place, not only to uh, work, uh, incredible opportunities, but I thoroughly enjoyed living there. I mean, who wouldn't want to live in the Hawaii of the Orient? It's uh, Hainan, or China's only tropical island and has a plethora of luxury and uh, hotels and experiences and incredible uh, tropical coastline and rainforest. But on top of that, it is the focal point for China opening up one of the largest free trade ports and free trade zones in the world. So we are gonna delve, and this will be kind of our first uh, you know, glimpse at Hainan, and I'm hoping in the future we can put together more webinars and then hopefully get you out to Hainan to really uh, see for it for yourself and be able to participate. If we can go to my share screen here just for a second. Okay, thank you. And then I want to say good morning to all the people in China that have uh, logged on, particularly my students. I actually have a class right now, and the students are required to watch me again and to participate in this international forum. And that to me is very, very exciting, seeing practical things happen, connecting China and America for a more prosperous future. We have a fantastic lineup today of uh, from the provincial government, from uh, the renowned Thunderbird School of uh, Global Management, from Sanya University, from the Sanya Free Trade Zone. And then uh, sort of toward the end, if there's any time, we will talk about the tourism opportunities. Again, I lived, uh, I was first in Hainan in 2018 and 19 as a consultant for the UN World Tourism Organization, uh, helping write the Hainan International Marketing Plan. I fell in tourism marketing plan. I fell so much in love with Hainan. I moved back over there. Here are kind of some of the fun uh, photos of my uh, life when I lived there in uh, 2019. We're going to start off very soon with a promotional video and just give you an idea, sort of uh, be able to uh, conceptualize what Hainan is like. And then we will have uh, Governor Bob Holden give some opening remarks. Uh, I will then introduce uh, the remaining speakers uh, from the uh, provincial government, from Thunderbird, uh, from uh, the Sanya International, uh, uh, International uh, Technology Administration and from Sanya University. Okay, so that's kind of a, an overview of our agenda. And then wrapping up at about 10.15, 10.30 Eastern time here, uh, we will see if we have uh, questions for our panelists and we will get into a little bit of tourism if we have time as well. Okay, Jason, I'm ready to turn it over to you to show the introductory video about Hainan and the Hainan Free Trade Port. On June 1st, 2020, the CPC Central Committee and the State Council of China issued a master plan for the construction of Hainan Free Trade Port. Hainan Island, with a land area of 33,900 square kilometers, has since then opening its arm to the rest of the world as the world's largest free trade port. By 2025, the policy system of Hainan Free Trade Port prioritizing trade and investment liberalization and facilitation will have initially taken shape. By 2035, Hainan will be forced into a new highland and China featuring an open economy. By the middle of the 21st century, 
China will build itself into a high-level free trade port with relatively strong international influence. Hainan Island and the forefront of China's reform and opening up is developed to be a special area for customs supervision, which implements the tax system of zero tariffs, low tax rates, and simplified taxation to facilitate trade and investment liberalization, cross-border capital flow, entry and exit to people, transportation, and a safe and orderly flow of data. Here, the opening up policy will be implemented at the first line, which means Hainan Free Trade Port will allow free entry and exit for most of the goods to be traded with other countries and regions outside Chinese mainland and exempt imports from tariffs. Control measures will be carried out at the second line, with a new management model to be implemented between the Hainan Free Trade Port and the rest of Chinese mainland. On June 3, 2020, Yangpu Bonded Port Area took the lead to implement the import and export management system featuring free flow at the first line and efficient control at the second line. On the same day, 11 key industrial parks of the Hainan Free Trade Port were simultaneously inaugurated to enjoy initial policies of the Free Trade Port and reap early harvests. Here, the annual offshore duty-free shopping quota has been lifted to 100,000 yuan per person, a new favorable policy that has been officially launched on July 1, 2020. At the same time, the categories of the offshore duty-free goods has been increased from 38 to 45. Here, in Hainan, the maximum personal income tax for eligible talents is 15%. And for encouraged enterprises, the corporate income tax is 15%. For tourism, modern services, and high-tech industry enterprises, the corporate tax on income acquired from their newly added foreign direct investment before 2025 is exempted. Highland provides universal access to non-prohibited sectors, implements the pre-establishment national treatment plus an active list management system, it has greatly reduced the number of prohibitions and restrictions. Hainan intends to establish a free trade port legal system underpinned by Hainan Free Trade Port Law and mainly composed of local regulations and commercial dispute resolution mechanisms. Supported by the vast Chinese domestic market, Hainan stands ready to seize the precious opportunities brought about by the new round of global technological revolution and industrial transformation. This is Hainan, who is spreading its wings to soar high. Here is Hainan, a promising land with numerous opportunities for all kinds of talents and investors. Looking forward to meeting you in Hainan Free Trade Port. Wow, um, that was great. I was just explaining to some of our panelists how I am currently in Chicago and it is very dark and very cold here. So um, I'm already sold. <laughs> um, give me a moment to switch screens here. Okay, well, um, welcome everyone. If you're just getting in, we um, just took a quick sneak peek at a promotional video for Hainan. Um, if you'd like to see the full version, we will share that after this webinar. But uh, I wanna say welcome to everyone who just came. Um, the title for events tonight is Hainan, China's Hawaii and world's largest free trade zone. As you can see, we have a great array of panelists joining us tonight. Um, which I will turn over to uh, John later for introductions. Uh, my name is Jason Conley. I'm the program associate at the United States Heartland China Association. Before we begin tonight, I'm just gonna go through a quick few housekeeping things um, just for the webinar. So pardon me while I butt in. Uh, this event tonight is brought to us by Arizona State University and Invest Hainan, which um, of course they both helped us promote this event and provided some of our excellent speakers for tonight. So thank you again to our partners uh again a few quick housekeeping things i'll go through um, at the bottom of your screen uh, you should see a q a option if at any time during the webinar today 
you do have a question you'd like for the panelists to answer, we encourage you to please use the Q&A option to do so, and we will try to get to it at the end of today's session. In addition, if you have just two or three minutes after the webinar, uh, we would love for you to give us some feedback in our survey option. Uh, we do go through all those, so that would be great. Uh, again, please continue to check us out at our website, usheartlandchina.org, and uh, feel free to continue attending our webinars if you like what you see here tonight. Um, so I will stop talking. I am going to turn it over to the U.S. Heartland China Association CEO and Chairman, uh, Governor Bob Holden. Um, Governor Holden is going to be giving us some opening remarks. So Governor Holden, please. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Uh, very much appreciate it. Uh, thank, thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. Tonight's event is very exciting. Hanan is a very unique part of China and is a superb example of collaboration that is possible between the United States and China. Free trade is one way of a bridge building between two cultures that often means economic prosperity for all parties involved. As we continue with our discussion tonight, I would like to set the tone by reminding the audience of how important I think openness and cooperation are. The more barriers we can remove from from trade, the more we can engage in a global marketplace. This openness extends beyond simply free trade in goods and services. It is openness to ideas, innovation, public, and public involvement and investment. This comes from the belief that these things make our societies stronger. Free trade and opportunities like working globally ensure that globalization happens the way we want it to. We should have a stake in the way the world globalizes. Thank you again for attending tonight. I look forward to see, uh, watching this program throughout the evening and what a beautiful uh, opportunity this is. So John, let me turn it over to you. Well, thank you uh, very much, Governor, for those uh, great remarks. And again, uh, emphasizing how important it is uh, to you know, be creating our partnerships, our collaborations, be able to learn about the opportunities, not only in Hainan, but we want to uh, let Hainan know the opportunities in uh, the heartland as well. And uh, there are many. Again, uh, greetings from uh, to all the uh, heartland uh, attendees here. Thank you so much for taking time and uh, being a part of this. And I wanna thank all of uh, our attendees from uh, China and from Hainan as well. Thank you for taking your time. Hopefully this will get the uh, juices flowing, our, uh, our entrepreneurial uh, and innovative creativity moving, and uh, we can come out with some action on how we're going to move this forward in the future. And again, uh, greetings from uh, ASU. We are a very dynamic university. Actually, the Sierra Club just uh, nominated us or, or voted us as the coolest university uh, in, uh, in uh, America with uh, the highest level of uh, sustainability taught. So that was a, a huge accolade as well. Uh, we worked for the uh, ASU School of Community Resources and Development five years ago, uh, put together a program with Hainan University, which is the, uh, in, uh, to start the Hainan University ASU International Tourism College. We call it HITECH. And HITECH is, is China's first Sino foreign cooperative tourism industry and Hainan's first uh, Sino foreign cooperative institution that's been approved by the Ministry of Education. Uh, we offer a dual degree uh, in English uh, only uh, taught for the four years, but a dual degree from ASU and Hainan University, which is a fantastic degree. Uh, and we are really, really proud of having our first graduating class uh, in the spring of about 250 people. And we're really, really happy of uh, being a part of Hainan University's new international campus uh, being built in Mission Hills, uh, Heiko. Mission Hills, if you look down below, has the world's largest public golf course of 10 golf courses there along this beautiful uh, 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 volcanic type fields. They employ 3,000 caddies alone and that's how big it is. So I'm a big golfer, so I can't wait to move to the new campus. Uh, to be so close to probably the world's best golf course. And if anybody in the heartland likes to golf, again, another reason to come out and visit us there. So as we said, we have some fantastic speakers today. 
We are going to start out with Ms. Huang. She's the Chief Representative of the Beijing Office for the Hainan Provincial Bureau of International Economic Development. She's going to talk a bit on the Hainan International Investment Incentives. So welcome, Ms. Huang, and we look forward to uh, your introduction of letting everybody know the fantastic opportunities uh, that Hainan offers for international investment. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Heather. Well, today I'll talk about uh, a different Hainan, and uh, which is your new partner. My name is Huang, and I'm from the Hainan Provincial Bureau of International Economic Development, which is an organization set up by the provincial government of Hainan to serve global investors. Well, um, Hainan is the southern most uh, province, and it is the only tropical province of China. Uh, indeed, in the past, people regard it more as a tourism destination. If you haven't been to Hainan before, you can imagine it as Hawaii plus Orlando. Uh, it is located at uh, almost a similar latitude of those locations and enjoy the very good air quality, the uh, rich tourism resources and attracted lots of uh, tourists traveling from domestic regions and international uh, countries and regions. But since last June, when the new policy uh, was released, it has already been turned into a hotspot for international investors. We will talk about the policy framework and the new opportunities offered by Hainan now. Well, building the Hainan Free Trade Port is China's key national strategy, which is the new position, uh, positioning of the island. Well, we aim to build the island into the front runner of opening up and a key opening door in the new era, which could connect uh, China to the uh, Indian and Pacific Ocean regions. It is also the only free trade port among China's 21 free trade zones. So if you look at the map of China, you can, uh, you might find that uh, Hainan is a remote outlying island. But if you look at the map of the world, you can find Hainan is located right at the center, um, especially in the Indian and Pacific Ocean regions. So it has the great ge uh, geological location and it can't be the new place for uh, global investors to settle down. So when it is built, it will become the largest free trade port in the world, which is uh, the, covering the whole Hainan Island and about the size of 50 Singapore's. Also, since we uh, aim to keep in line with the highest, uh, with the uh, advanced level of uh, trade and economic rules, we will have the highest degree of openness when it is built. And from here, you can also get reached to the largest consumer population, not only uh, the 1.4 billion people on mainland, but also the largest population from adjacent ASEAN countries. While there are stage goals in building the free trade port, first, it will take us less than five years to achieve free and convenient trade and investment, which is the uh, typical feature for a free port. Then it will take us another 10 years to achieve free and convenient flow in six areas, namely trade, investment, cross-border capital, people entry and exit, transportation, and data transfers. So by then the Hainan Free Trade Port is built. And then it will take us another 15 years to uh, become a matured free trade port with global influence. Well, people might be curious or concerned that uh, how China is going to implement uh, the construction of the free trade port. In, in fact, it is protected by law. In June, the Hainan free trade port law uh, was enacted and uh, entered into force. Uh, it means the country is taking another initiative for the central legislature to formulate a law for a particular region following the uh, basic laws for the Hong Kong SAR and Macau SAR. 
and it incorporates a series of reforms such as investment liberalization and facilitation, as well as fiscal and tax regimes into the legal framework. And um, the interest of global investors will be protected through this effort in terms of the sustainability and st stability of the free trade port policies. Well, um, when we talk about the major framework of uh, our free trade port policies, um, as well our core competitiveness, you can uh, simply uh, think about it as zero tariffs, low tax rates, and much more openness. I'll elaborate on those points. First of all, about uh, zero tariff, since the first day of 2025, all the imported products will be entitled to zero tariff policies. And before that day arrives, we are at the early arrangement period. So uh, we already allowed duty-free policies on certain products on those uh, four lists you can see from the screen, um, mostly connected to um, those um, uh, products connected to production process and also daily use products uh, consumed by local residents. And apart from those lists, we also have the very special offshore duty-free policy, uh, which uh, was announced last July uh, that allowed the annual offshore duty-free shopping quota for per person to uh, reach to uh, $14,500 each year. So this is a very uh, big leap. So uh, also the categories of duty-free goods are expanded to 45. Last year, the uh, total sales for duty-free goods hit 3.8 billion. And this year we aim to double that figure, which means every day uh, the sales in those duty-free stores will hit $18 million. So this gives a great opportunity for international quality goods to enter the China market and to tap the huge potential of the whole China market since people can uh, come to Hainan uh, with very easily just uh, buying a ticket can help them to come here and enjoy those offshore duty-free sales policy. Well, last year due to the uh, pandemic, uh, um, almost all the tourists coming to the island are from mainland, about 98% of the tourists are from mainland. However, once the international travel uh, is resumed, we will anticipate a lot more tourists coming from foreign countries since uh, we have the visa-free entry policy uh, that are applied to tourists from 59 countries who can stay up to 30 days per visit. So in the future, there are more international tourists combined with domestic tourists. We will have a very huge market. We're trying to utilize such policies to build Hainan into the international tourism and consumption destination because we are trying to promote return of consumption in three areas, the duty-free shopping, education, and also medical services. Uh, also, we have to keep pace with international market in terms of um, so, uh, in terms of providing the same brands you can find overseas, and also the same varieties and the same price. Well, the second feature for the free trade port is the low tax rate regime. Already, we apply the fifteen percent income tax rate for corporate income in encouraged industries since now. And after 2025, all companies registered in Hainan will be entitled to that preferential tax rate. Also, we uh, apply 15% uh, personal income tax rate for high-end and urgently needed talents. And after 2025, the uh, average tax rate for uh, talents will be further brought down. We have the rule of origin uh, policy, which allowed uh, products with more than 30% of added value to enter the mainland, uh, which are entitled to tax exemption. Also uh, for 
uh, outbound direct investment, we will apply the tax exemption policy for them, uh, for those revenue coming from the new outbound direct investment. So uh, this has all together, uh, uh, this has all together formed the low tax rate regime of the free trade port. Then the third uh, feature of our free trade port is the open arrangements. We mean free flows in six areas uh, for uh, uh, free and convenient trade. Uh, we not only provided zero duty policy for trading goods, but also we've just released the shortest list of um, the shortest negative list for trade in services which means that in the future, we will open up our market further to overseas service providers. Also in terms of free and convenient investment, we, are, um, we, we also enjoy the highest level of openness among all provinces in China. We also offer free flows for cross-border capital. So utilizing this policy, a lot of um, investment company have already set up the uh, investment platforms here to facilitate both inbound and outbound investment activities. In terms of uh, people entry and exit, I talked about we have the visa-free entry policy, which has been uh, greatly relaxed. And in the future, we will even further open up this area to attract more people coming from the world to visit, to work here. And for transportation, we are not only building the Yangpu port into an international uh, shipping hub, but also we've uh, opened up the seventh freedom of air, which is the highest level of uh, aviation rights, uh, which allows a foreign airline companies to operate flights from Hainan to a third country. So in the future, we can anticipate more cargo flights and passenger flights coming in and out of Hainan. And then we have the uh, secure and orderly data flows, uh, which means we encourage uh, offshore data uh, center to be established in Hainan to facilitate their international uh, businesses which is very helpful for those data intensive companies. So uh, this is uh, basically the whole institutional framework for the free trade port. And we now are encouraging the development of key industries and a lot of opportunities can find uh, from these industries. Of course, the first pillar industry for us is tourism. Uh, we mean, uh, not only tourism for uh, sightseeing, traveling, you can combine uh, tourism with consumption, but also we are uh, uh, encouraging the development of medical tourism. Since uh, we have the pilot zone for international medical tourism, where uh, those new drugs in overseas markets, new uh, medical devices or technologies will be encouraged to be pre prescribed or used directly in Hainan. So this has opened up new opportunities for global uh, leading pharmaceutical companies. They all have their uh, new companies established here or have R&D centers set up in Hainan now. And the uh, second pillar industry is modern services. We not only encourage those commercial services uh, sectors such as uh, exhibition industry, uh, headquarter economy, those uh, special services sectors uh, like the uh, modern finance and modern logistics sectors. But also we are in uh, building Hainan into the international design island. We welcome those design talents to come and uh, to uh, have their uh, ac companies run, have uh, activities conducted here. But also we are building Hana into the island for international education because we allow uh, those leading uh, schools and colleges to, uh, to set up the branch school here independently. And the third pillar industry is the high tech industry because we have the low tax rate policy and also the um, free entry policy. Companies could consider uh, setting up an R&D center 
here to help them to cut down the cost and increase their efficiency. Then the fourth pillar industry is the tropical high production agriculture, which is closely connected to our tropical feature. Well, a lot of leading seed companies are already uh, considering investing in Hainan or already set up their companies here. And also I'd like to talk about a particular platform that would help uh, those quality consumer products to enter Hainan and enter the China market, which is the China International Consumer Products Expo. It is a national level expo co-hosted by the Ministry of Commerce of China and Hainan Provincial Government. This May, we held the first edition of this expo, which had a huge success because a number of those uh, leading uh, fashion groups, um, a number of uh, fashion brands join in and they not only signed uh, agreements with those professional buyers with very large retail companies, but also they find their on-site sales hit record high, which was beyond their expectation. So uh, we have uh, companies from different sectors registering and enjoy the new opportunities, but also uh, many of those companies uh, release their new products here uh, well, uh, through those uh, global media coverage, we reach a uh, global audience. And after the expo, we successfully helped a lot of companies that participated in the expo to settle down in Hainan and start their new business here. We helped them to network with those duty-free stores and we also help them to uh, set up like trading uh, companies or maybe they are considering manufacturing base here. Uh, for the United States, uh, we uh, already helped Tapestry to establish a trading companies here. And also we helped uh, NBA, the National Basketball Association to set up a basketball coaching school in Hainan, in Mission Hill, uh, exactly. So in the future, we're glad to serve more companies from the world uh, to help them introduce the quality products to the Chinese consumers and help them to find new opportunities, new business partners in China. Well, uh, currently over 80% of those exhibitors already signed up for the second edition, which will be held next April. So we think this would also be a very good platform for US companies to um, learn about the Hainan market and the China market to look at Hainan close up. So we are willing to work together with you to offer this opportunity. And we are glad to receive any business delegations coming from the US heartland. And again, you can reach us through various channels. You can uh, dial our investment service hotline. You can uh, contact us through LinkedIn account and also send us email or follow up uh, uh, from the WeChat accounts. We are uh, willing to work with the US Heartland China Association and um, all the other uh, organizations that are willing to build a bridge between China and the United States. Thank you. We promised you the best service. And our slogan is we run for your business. Thank you. Fantastic, uh, Ms. Wong. And thank you very much. Let me just hit a couple of uh, high points there. Number one, I love your uh, comparison of, of, of Hainan being not just Hawaii, but Hawaii plus Orlando. And I think, uh, I think that is a fantastic image of having so many theme parks and uh, kind of engaging types of attractions there. Uh, and again, thank you for reminding me about the National Basketball Association, the NBA just opened a facility in Mission Hills, very close to our new campus. So I am very, very excited for that. Uh, it's amazing how popular basketball is throughout all of China. Even in Hainan University, there must be at least 100 courts and they're packed every single afternoon. Uh, I really liked your uh, specifically emphasizing that uh, the uh, 
free trade zone is the entire province. It's just not uh, it's just not an a, a, you know a port here or a port there, but it's the only one in China that where it's the entire province. And it's not just one harbor or one port. There are many ports throughout Hainan where uh, uh, that uh, their shipping can be uh, uh, contained. Uh, I like you, uh, and, I, and I've noted later the International Consumer Expo. Uh, I sent my students to that. They volunteered at that. Uh, 250,000 people uh, attended. There were 1,500 uh, 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 companies that were there in presenting. So fantastic. And to me, this is something, a focal point for 2022 that we should try to get the heartland uh, is excited and be involved with it one way or the other, because it, what a fantastic opportunity. We had um, some questions on the rule of origin uh, with the 30% added value. So if, if a product from America comes to Hainan, they add 30% of the value, then it can be taken to the mainland and uh, be tax exempt. Is that is that how I read that? Yes, yes. That okay. means uh, since uh, we import those raw material and production equipment uh, at uh, duty free terms, and then uh, if the added value, um, if the value added uh, in Hainan, uh, on Hainan Island exceeds 30% of the total value of the final product, then the final product can enter the mainland directly without paying uh, duties. Okay, so I, I think for the heartland, one of their huge concerns would be agriculture and how agriculture uh, could be uh, added value there. Maybe they sure. can ship the, the raw uh, product there and it can be packaged or canned or, or jarred or mm -hmm. uh, you know divided in a certain way for that added value to make it uh, to that tax exemption uh, limitation there, right? Yes, of course. Uh, uh, I think we already have a Kagyu uh, company from the United States, which is in the uh, food and agriculture processing uh, okay. sector that have uh, established their factory here. And also uh, nowadays we are serving uh, many companies, not only from the agricultural sector, but also from those uh, very high end manufacturing sector who are trying to utilize this uh, policy. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Uh, and we have uh, Tesla has a innovation center in Hainan mm -hmm. as well. And I think that that is very exciting. Uh, regarding the ODI tax exemption, and did you say that includes tourism investment? That if uh, somebody was going to, uh, that it's going to be tax exempt to 2025? If somebody invests in tourism in Hainan, say uh, buys a hotel, is, is that tax exempt until 2025? I just needed some clarity there. Well, the ODI means investment, uh, those outbound investment outside of China which okay. means the company sets up an international business headquarter here, then right. all those investment activities, the revenues they get from overseas outside of China okay. could be exempted from tax when the income goes back to Hainan. Okay, interesting, interesting. And then is there a tax exemption for tourism investment? Yes, sure. Okay. Well, good. Those were some of the uh, initial questions that came over. Uh, there will probably be some more toward the end, but I think that that was just kind of a great wrap up and you gave a, a fantastic uh, overview of the potential possibilities in outlining uh, what uh, sectors are going to be priorities and uh, what the some of the incentives are. And I know you just touched base. I'm, I'm sure the incentives go a lot deeper. And so we will do our best trying to provide more and more uh, sort of English language overview uh, to our heartland, uh, our participants here. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, so as we go on to our, our next speaker, again, thank you, uh, Ms. Huang. We are going to move over to uh, Dr. Doug Guthrie. He uh, works for ASU's Thunderbird School of Global Management. I must admit here that I am an alum of uh, Thunderbird, graduated way back in 1986. And so uh, very happy Thunderbird was independent then, but ASU acquired them about five years ago. And uh, Thunderbird is, is building a campus in downtown uh, Phoenix right now, just about to open within the next month or two. 
it is supposedly the highest technology campus uh, uh, anywhere in the world from that's what the architects said so very excited for that uh, opening excited that Thunderbird is with ASU now and hugely excited that we have Dr. Guthrie here to give us a, an important uh, kind of doing business in China that's his focus uh, Thunderbird offers uh, micro kind of uh, certification sessions that you can follow up on to to really get into doing business in China, but he's uh, he's really the expert there, and I'm I'm really excited that he's here uh, to talk with us. So, uh, without further ado, uh, Doug, let me turn over the uh, turn over the recording to you, uh, and uh, take it away. Thank you so much, John, and um, you know it's so uh, such an honor to be here with such an esteemed panel. And I, I'm going to just try to speak through very quickly. Uh, just to be clear, I don't know nearly as much of the, the specific details on the tax issues or the business development issues that, uh, that the esteemed Ms. Uh, Ms. Huang gave us. But I'm going to talk a little bit more about just sort of general issues of doing business in China and, and how we can actually sort of think through US-China relations. Just let me give you a tiny bit more background if I could, on my own experience with this. So I'm a lifelong China scholar. I started studying Chinese language, literature, and history long, long ago when I was uh, didn't have gray hair and was, was much younger than I am now. Um, uh, and I loved it. I loved Chinese language, literature, and history. At some point, I realized uh, you can't make a lot of money reading Tang Dynasty poetry. And so I went from reading Tang Dynasty poetry to studying economic development. And, uh, you know, I was a student of China in the late 1980s, and I was fascinated by the Tiananmen movement and China's, you know, development in the 90s. And so I spent a lot of time in China, um, starting out in, in the early 1990s. I was, I am among China scholars, I am China's biggest uh, China bull. Like I believe in the Chinese economic reform process. I think it's a fascinating economic development process. And it's one that Hainan is just the next block in that process of how really effective economic development is happening. Um, and so I'm gonna just talk a little bit about that history and just give some, some more background and context. The one other thing that I would just say for me, so, well, maybe two other things. Uh, Related to the, the Heartland agenda, um, when I was a dean of a business school for a little while in 2010 to 2013 uh, in Washington, D.C. I was the dean of the George Washington School of Business. And I was, you know, having been a China scholar and a China consultant, and I was sort of concerned about what can I do? to really help advance this agenda. And at that time, I started working with the mayor of Washington, DC to figure out flows of capital and US-China investment. And so when John approached me about the Heartland uh, program, I was just, you know, it just brought me back to this really, really important thing because US-China relations are the most important thing that's gonna continue our development. Uh, for those of you who, who don't know what the Thunderbird School of Management was, was built on, the entire concept was a post-World War II concept that borders frequented by trade don't need soldiers. That's the whole idea. The whole idea is that we are all in the world much better off on having positive economic engagement and, you know, I was a part of those debates with respect to China in the 1990s that helped China get into the WTO. And I continue to believe it today. And it's the reason that I am at Thunderbird today. The one other thing I'll just say about myself is I, I was, uh, uh, took some time off from academia and I worked for Apple as the head of Apple University in China and studied a lot about economic development and supply chain management there. And so th those are the things that I'm going to, that, that are sort of the experiences for me. Now, very quickly, I want to give a little bit more historical background than Ms. Huang gave, just because I think that this is a really, really important thing to understand about China. And again, I'm, I'm a staunch China bull. Uh, I believe in China's economic development process. Um, 
China is a fascinating place when you really sort of think about this economic development process. I mean, you know, going back to the Ming Dynasty, China was far and away the most powerful economy in the world. It was the most innovative economy in the world. It was hands down. The you know, it occupied about a third of the global GDP. Uh, all of the great innovations that changed the world, from gunpowder to paper to to the nautical compass, these things all came out of China at that time. Now, there was a period when China went very inward focused, and there was a very, very long period of pain. Uh, and so that sort of fast forwards us up to 1979 when Deng Xiaoping came into power. Uh, it was very interesting when I was in China in the in the around 2011 when Walter Isaacson's book came out. There were a lot of people who were concerned about China and the ability to innovate. And not knowing the history, people didn't realize that China had been for many, many centuries the most innovative economy in the world. Um, and when Isaacson's book, which was about Steve Jobs, came out, there were a bunch of people in China saying, when are we going to have our own Steve Jobs? And the answer that came out was, we already had our own Steve Jobs. His name was Deng Xiaoping, and he changed the course of Chinese history. And I believe that. I believe that, and it's I'm a fun, fundamentally a part of that, that sort of literature and history of writing this story. So when Deng Xiaoping comes to power in 1979, there were a number of things that happened. Uh, you know, there was the Shanghai movement, which was about copying approaches to, to innovation from the West. There was opening the doors to China for manufacturing. Uh, but Deng Xiaoping was also very fundamentally tied to what I think of as three key principles to economic reform. One, was gradualism. So we move slowly. Deng Xiaoping had a famous phrase called Mo Shi Guohe, which means feeling for stones to cross the river. You mo gradually move through this process. He was also very pragmatic, right? Deng Xiaoping was famous for saying, I don't care about black cats or white cats. What I care about is catching mice. I care about China's rise, return to power. But the third thing that was most important and much most relevant for the Hainan question is decentralization. So a lot of people think about China as a very, very tightly controlled, centralized, planned economy. Not true. China, of course, has a very powerful government in Beijing and, you know, President Xi Jinping and before him, President uh, Hu Jintao and before him, President Jiang Zemin. They all have a very, very strong influence on the vision. But the interesting thing about China's economy is it balances centralized control with decentralized autonomy. So there was a very famous article that was hugely influence, influential in my career in the er, mid 1990s called, it was written by a guy named Andy Walter called Local Governments as Industrial Firms. And the basic concept is you have centralized control, but you also have a very decentralized system in which local provinces and municipalities are encouraged to just figure out the path to a really, really innovative future. And so along these lines, you find the first case of really, really aggressive decentralized special economic zones with Shenzhen. And then with Deng Xiaoping's Southern Tour in 1992, you have Pudong. And then you have the Suzhou Industrial Park and several others. Hainan is the next crown, jewel in this crown. Hainan is, is such a fascinating case in terms of what the government is trying to do to encourage local economic development that, of course, has a, is driven by the central planners. But the innovation that is tied to the province and uh, the municipalities there is really key to what's happening. Now, as, as John and, and I think uh, Ms., Ms. Huang mentioned, in the past, these special economic zones have always been tied to specific municipalities like Shenzhen or Pudong in Shanghai. This is the first time that this has been done at a provincial level, and it's fascinating. I mean, and, and just the idea of not just about free trade, but also 
as was mentioned earlier, uh, Ms. Wong mentioned, this isn't just about trade. This is about tourism, but probably most importantly, and this is my own hobby horse, and, and John, I think you're a part of this too. This is about education. They are pushing forward really, really innovative approaches to educational reform that are going to continue to push the envelope on transforming China. And so it, uh, to me, it is, it is a fascinating, fascinating case in the sort of lockstep of economic development within China and this central control versus decentralized innovation. But this is, this is the one that I think we're all watching right now. And so to me, it's a very, very, very exciting process and, and one that really shows the balance between a long-term plan for the nation, but also a decentralized level of autonomy and entrepreneurship that happens at the provincial and municipal levels. So John, I know we're tight on time, so I'm going to stop there, but that's, that's sort of my air, area and energy and passion on these issues. And so let me pass it back to you. I think you're on mute, Don, John. Uh, stay on board. Uh, we do have a, a few questions. I think that you might, again, uh, thank you so much again for the perspective that you add there, Doug, uh, particularly uh, as the opening up is going and, and how it's been in process for a, a number of decades. And this is the next step. And that's what makes it so fantastically exciting. And what is really important about Hainan being an island province is that they can really try out and be very innovative there because it really has kind of established borders there. You have to you have a flight or a ferry to get on and off. So they really can be a lot more innovative than anywhere else on mainland China. And it really uh, works to the benefit. And as Ms. Huang said, the strategic geographic location right close to all the Southeast Asia uh, yeah. populations there, also very, very important. Uh, let's see, D does Hainan allow or does, does China allow the free flow of money in and out, uh, Doug, as, as you know it? So, uh, and Ms. Huang, please correct me if I'm, I'm wrong about this, but, but Hainan is being, is given special control that other provinces don't have. Like, so there's a lot more ability to have free flow both in terms of the innovation of the, the, the capital, but also in terms of the tax issues and in terms of the ability, ability to develop processes through, throughout China. And so it, the interesting thing here is, you know, and, and hopefully this is not too controversial of a statement, but, you know, Hainan is really going to be positioned to be really the centerpiece of what Hong Kong used to be for China. Like Hong Kong used to be sort of the place where as a foreign investor or as capital, you would go and then sort of figure out your way into China and Hainan, which is a provincial level place. It's not a city, right? And so it's actually, I really think going to over time, take over that position. And it's also, again, different than Shenzhen and Pudong. Shenzhen and Pudong both have their own stock exchanges and they, all, but they both, you know, have sort of been positioned as kind of helping to China develop its capital markets. But eventually I think Hainan is gonna be, is really gonna be positioned to take over that, that position. Is that correct, Ms. Wong? Yeah, sure, yeah, sure. And that's uh, why we are now also working very closely with other free ports like uh, Hong Kong and Singapore. Yeah, yeah. So fantastic uh, kind of highlight there of being the centerpiece of what Hong Kong used to be. This is sort of the new Hong Kong, and uh, you can see all the sort of energies going in there to test things. Uh, particularly, you brought up education, and obviously we're very happy with ASU to be kind of at the forefront of that, but I've seen uh, incredible uh, types of, of uh, solicitation for new uh, partnerships with other universities. And particularly, Hainan wants, it's their goal to have 10% what they call international talents be a part of their population, okay? So they're really very aggressive as uh, Ms. Wong said, with a lot of trying to get these international talents, these international headquarters uh, established there. But they understand on two respects is that they have to have international education there, 
for people to want to move there with their families and uh, or pursue advanced degrees. And then number two, particularly for the tourism industry, and this is where we've been really lucky with ASU, the tourism industry is so huge, as Ms. Wong said, 83 million domestic tourists uh, uh, a year in 2019. There's a huge demand for training in hospitality services, uh, particularly focused on trying to bring in this new international market as well. So uh, you, you're really spot on for, for focusing that uh, education was a, a, a primary concern there. John, John, could I raise one more thing very quickly? Sure. I know we've got to get onto the other panelists, but yeah, very quickly, worry. just on the education piece, for example, um, you know, I mean, years ago, I was a part of NYU and helping NYU set up NYU in Shanghai. And then when I was a dean at GW, I helped have, you know, set up the programs there. It's very hard in China, and for good reason, to get independent degree granting status as a foreign university. And it goes up to the Ministry of Education. Hainan is special in this space because Hainan has a lot more latitude to allow for independent degree granting status without a very complex partnership. And so they're really, really encouraging this talent development piece. And it's, to me, it's fascinating. And as you point out, John, I'm so happy that ASU is there. I mean, I think it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great signal for, for our collaboration for the future. Right. One last question. I think you more or less answered it, but let me just pass it out along. So uh, you will have one last say on it. Uh, do the policies and the direction of the development in Hainan seem compatible with the course of China's other domestic and foreign policies? So, so my view is yes, and I know that we're in a difficult time and there's constant things going on with U.S.-China relations and China's positioning in the world. But again, I like to think of these things as a, as, as an, as a synergistic approach to central planning, but decentralized autonomy. And so China has a long history over the last 40 years of allowing provinces and municipalities the ability to experiment with new things that are gonna push the boundary for in a, that are gonna encourage innovation. And so I, I just don't see any, any difficulties here. I think it's very clear. It's also to me very clear that, that this is a high priority for the government right now. I mean, Xi, Xi Jinping is a big, big supporter of the developments in Hainan. And it's, you know, just like Deng Xiaoping had Shenzhen and Pudong, and, you know, then we had the Suzhou Industrial Park and that, you know, this is the new, the new test case, but it, it's, to me, it's in lockstep with the economic development process. And so I, I don't find it a conflict at all. Good, good. Well, that, that's a good clarification. Uh, and, and again, I want if you if the, the audience was there at the very beginning, we started a little early to show a little overview. Uh, there was one photo or, or one part of the video showing the rockets taking off uh, from Hainan. There is a, a big spaceport here. And again, it, we're not only the uh, we're not only the Hawaii or the Orlando, but we're, we're also the uh, the the launch center as well. <laughs> and and a, a lot of you know, the Chinese space station being built is being uh, launched here as well. So showing again on the high tech side in the space exploration side, you know, Hainan is a, is a China leader there as well. Beautiful. Yeah. Yep. OK, well, thank you very much, Dr. Guthrie. Great insight. And uh, I will show you just for you that while you are speaking, I, I put uh, Thunderbird's uh, new uh, global headquarters there for, for your slide there so people know about that. And hopefully those that are interested in further study of, uh, of uh, China and doing business in China, uh, Thunderbird is a, a world leader there and you should really uh, go and uh, look forward to uh, some of their programs, and there's a lot of executive education there as well. You don't have to go uh, uh, for a degree. Okay, so for our next, we are gonna go to our, my favorite place of all, all of Hainan, which is, uh, which is Sanya uh, Bay there. And it's, it's really kind of the Waikiki of, um, it's the Waikiki of, uh, of, uh, of, of Hainan, beautiful, gorgeous beaches. Uh, a lot of fun, different types of hotels. It kind of reminds me a lot of times of, of Waikiki, maybe in the 60s and the 70s in part. And then other parts look like Dubai, where you have an Atlantis 
uh, a one billion dollar Atlanta, forty five story Atlantis hotel there that is just absolutely amazing. So uh, it really is to me not only a focal point for tourism, but they're also shifting over to being a focal point for business and a focal point for living. So they really aren't just having one pillar to the economy in Sanya, but actually being very, very diverse. And so for today, we have, uh, all right, there we go. Sorry about that. So today we, we have uh, Charlotte uh, Magnete from the, um, the Sonia Yazao Bay Science and Technology Administration. And she's gonna talk about the government's uh, investment in the Yazao Bay Science and Technology City. And a very, very, you know, incredible amount. And, and this is just, you know, one of, of many big uh, concerted projects that are being supported both by the government and drawing in a lot of private sector money. So I'm really excited to hear kind of the new update on uh, what's going on in uh, Sanya. So uh, Charlotte, uh, please take it away. Thank you, John. Thank you very much for having me today. Um, yes, my, my name is Charlotte indeed, and I'm from Belgium and I'm the International Investment Manager at Sanya Yajo Bay Science and Technology City. So basically I'm in charge of communicating with potential foreign investor who wants to move and um, relocate here in Sanya. But I'm also part of the park service team. So I'm in charge as well of putting in place new mechanisms and convenient policies to ameliorate the international environment of our park. So I wanna start by like saying a little bit, what is this uh, Yajo Bay Science and Technology City? So actually it is one of the 11 key projects of the construction of Hainan Free Trade Court. And those pilot zones, they serve on one hand as test zone to test all those new preferential policies uh, that the government is issuing. But also it serves as sub city center to try to develop a business ecosystem and and boost the acquisition of new industries. So the, as Ms. Huang said, the construction of Han and Free Trade Board is, seems as a major strategic decision from the, the CBC and a key event in China's reform and opening up. So Yajo Bay will have a major role to play because we will have to establish new economic system and to develop a more market-oriented reforms and, and this legal and international business environment. So this is actually what we're really trying to develop here. So we want to develop this city into a pioneer technology city that uh, will create this uh, international business ecosystem that welcome both foreign and Chinese high-tech enterprise and create this environment with international cooperation in scientific research in innovation, but also in strategic investments. So um, I want to remind a little bit the location of Sanya and our SciTech city, which is, uh, of course, Sanya is the south as most part of Hainan Island. And it's the only tropical city that is surrounded on the north by the Nanshan mountain and on the south by the China South Sea. So Sanya is an important port for foreign trade and also a central city and transportation hub in the south of China. So it gave access not only to Chinese market, but also to all Southeast Asia. And Sanya also is, of course, the city that has the best air quality in China, which is a great point as well. So Yajo Bay is actually located in the westernmost side of Sanya. And it's currently the only bay that is a little bit undeveloped in Sanya. So there is huge potential development there as well. So um, Yajo Bay, this district is considered as the birthplace of Sanya culture heritage. Uh, so in China's history, Yajo was already one of the important ports on the ancient maritime silk and world. So diverse culture met and mingled there. So it's also like a cultural footnote to our SciTech -like city. Um, so our SciTech -like city has a very good um, strategic location as well because it's really easy accessible by land, by air and by sea. So we're only uh, 15 minutes from the high speed railway 
a train station that can bring you around all around the, the island. And we're also only five minutes from the highway. We only 30 minutes from the Sanya Phoenix International Airport, and we only 13 kilometers away from the new airport that is now under construction. And of course, by sea, we have connected to our city, we have the Nanshan port and the central fishing port. So um, the construction of Hainan Free Trade Port is actually a long um, project. Um, it started, and RSI Tech City started um, also at the same point, because in 2018, we had Xi Jinping that made this big um, declaration of Hainan would become this largest free trade port. And during this speech, he said that Hainan should focus on two major industries. So he said that we should develop the marine and science and technology, and especially focus on deep sea research. And as well, we should uh, strengthen the construction of the agricultural scientific research and breeding days. So um, these are actually the two major industries that we are developing here in the SciTech city. So then um, just briefly to remind you, further steps. So by 2020, there was this release of the master plan of the construction of the free trade port that says that by 2025, the whole island will be a free trade port. And then by 2035, we should have here the same kind of uh, leading business environment that we have in um, first year city like Shanghai or Beijing. And then by 2050, we should have a high level world class free trade port with international influence. So our site city is really built to follow also this plan. And right now, uh, as those two major characteristic industry we are developing, our city is divided in five parts. So you have one port, the Nanshan port. We have three cities inside our city. So the deep sea SciTech town, the agricultural SciTech town, and the education SciTech town. So, and then we have one base, the import and transfer base for global animal and plant germ plasma resources. Um, I will explain later in detail the different part of the city, but um, I just want to say that in addition of those uh, master plan and those industrial plans, um, we also formulated a specific plan to build a smart city, a green and low carbon city with comprehensive transportation and, and other aspects to make sure to provide this scientific control and, and guidance on the planning of the city. So you probably know that by 2060, China is also this uh, master plan to be completely carbon neutral, not only for Hainan, but for whole China. So I believe that in these fields also, there are lots of um, collaboration opportunities as China will need also uh, foreign investments and foreign expertise in that domain. So I will explain the characteristic, char sorry, characteristic industries that we are developing here in our city now. So the first one is um, the seed breeding science and technology. So Senya actually has an average temperature of 25.8 degrees all year long. So it has a tropical and humid climate. So thanks to those um, natural conditions of sunshine, temperature and water resources, uh, Sanya and Yajo Bay here is like a natural laboratory. And we were able to shorten the crop, the breeding cycle for the crop variety from 30 to 50%. Uh, which means that um, in China mainland, when you can do one or two harvests per year in Hainan, you can actually do three to four harvests per year. So this, why, this is why um, Yajo Bay has become already for a long time, even before the SciTech city was created, um, um, really uh, incubator and accelerator of the seed industry. Already out of the 7,000 cultivated crops um, in, in China, 70% uh, of those were cultivated here in the Bay's. Uh, you might have heard probably about this uh, very famous Chinese scientist, Yuan Longping, that we call him the father of the China hybrid rice. So he was the one also who developed this um, breeding base here in Yajou Bay. Um, and then 
So we focus on this base, of course, on seed breeding, but also on international seed trade. So this is why we built, as I was saying earlier, this important transfer base of global animal and plant germplasm resources, because its main purpose is this like small island on the shore of uh, our Cytec city. And its main purpose will be to quarantine all the new imported species in Hainan and make sure they don't harm the local environment before bringing them on land. So another advantage that this seed breeding base has is that we, improve the process to for the certification of new varieties so we established an intellectual property court inside our Cytec city to register any intellectual property rights but we have this specific zone for intellectual property rights in seed industry um, in terms of development of the base right now we have already china academy of science that is setting up the hainan seed innovation institute here and um, we are building the Nanfan Museum as well, where people will be able to learn more about agriculture and the new advancement in these fields. So around the breeding industry, there are as well many opportunities um, because lots of enterprises are setting up in the park now to provide services that are related to agriculture. We have things like biotechnology, smart manufacturing and so on. So the investment opportunities for foreign company in that field are also quite large. Um, in terms of industrial international development, uh, right now we have already closed deal with global industrial leaders such as uh, Syngenta, we have KWS from Germany, Key Jeans from Holland, and Mimagrin from France who already agreed to set up their China headquarters with us. Um, the second major industry that we are developing is the marine science and technology. So um, already, uh, Sanya is considered one of the best spots for deep sea research and development in China. And this is because of the death of the, uh, the China South Sea. So the average depth is 1,212 meter deep. So the deepest point is 5,567 meter. But the good thing is that from Yajou Bay, from where we are, if you go only 100 kilometers away from the shore, you can already reach this 1,000 deep meter sea. And if you go 260 kilometers from the shore, you reach already the 2,000 meter deep sea. So this means that in only one day, you can organize um, scientific exhibition and be back on shore on the same day. So the deep sea site tech town is focusing right now on two major parts. So the marine technology, which includes um, deep sea research, marine equipment and services, and the polytech industry that includes uh, smart manufacturing, information technology and new material. So already we have a top level marine scientific research institution that have established projects in our park. We have the South China Sea Institute of Oceanology from the Chinese Academy of Science. So their main um, their main, uh, this, this institution, so they will focus on sustainable development of ecological reef, uh, the maritime rights and interests, and also deep sea strategic resources exploration. Uh, we have also RSL in Yajou Bay establish an innovation public platform. And this platform will enable all the industries or uh, research institutes that moved in our part to share this platform and share resources they would need for their research. We have also the Deep Sea Museum that is uh, being uh, built right now. Um, but apart from those two major industries, our site exit is also open to any kind of industries. We already um, open our coverage into many other fields like uh, new technologies in medical field, in big data, internet games, AI, IoT. So this is really an open city that we will need to gather any type of industries as well. But to develop all those industries, we need um, resources, we need people, we need talent. So that brings us to the third part of our city, which is the science and education city. So we built 
uh, an open city when we are welcoming universities and institutions to set up their scientific postgraduate schools and branches with us. So we have constructed um, sharing classroom, laboratory, scientific research equipment for those university to use and share. So by having all those universities setting down in our park, the point is to create this multicultural pool of talents that on one hand, it will provide the industries and the companies in our park with high quality personnel, but also on the other hand, it will kind of boost the transformation of innovation and entrepreneurship because we work also with um, a number of VCs and incubators to help to grow those startups and stimulate the growth of innovation. So, so far in our park, we have already 11 top universities from China that set up the postgraduate school with us. We have, for example, Shanghai Jiao Tong University, we have Zhejiang University, we have uh, Ocean University of China as well. Um, so the next goal actually is to attract now foreign universities as well to set up in our park. And to do so, as uh, Doug was saying earlier, uh, Hainan has implemented new policies for foreign institution. And now foreign universities are allowed to independently run school here in Hainan. So Hainan is the only place in China now that, uh, that allows um, foreign high level science, engineering, agriculture, medicine universities, and even vocational colleges as well to completely independently run schools here. So um, Hainan has also uh, here simplified a lot the process to run uh, Sino-Foreign Cooperation Education programs. So this will also uh, bring really new innovation in the education system here as well. Um, so our, um, yeah, <laughs> so what I want to say next is what is what makes um, our site City a great place for um, investment and foreign investments? So basically, uh, in 2019, um, the administration bureau of the site City has been created. So this administration bureau is actually a statutory agency that implements municipal and also some of the provincial administration approval authorities. And the mayor of Sanya himself acts as the director of the bureau. But next to that, um, we also adopted the Singapore mode. So we collaborating with some Fortune 500 like uh, China Americans Group or Sinochem Group to develop the city. And we established this win-win model by using their influence in industrial accumulation, which means that this is a really great thing about that place. So we have on the same time the advantages of the government, but also we have this very market orientation system. Um, other advantages that we have is of course the preferential policies. Uh, we benefited from the Hainan for preferential policies that Ms. Huang explained earlier. So I'm not gonna repeat all of that uh, mainly low tax system, 15% and 50% for corporate and individual uh, taxes. We have this um, zero uh, import export taxes as well. Um, but on the top of those high and free trade port policies, in our park, uh, we have, uh, we propose extra preferential policies for companies that register here. So, um, it includes like more tax rebate for foreign investments, uh, advantages, office renting benefits. We have welfare packages, rewards and subsidies, and those are set up in case by case per companies. Uh, we have also in our park, very good policies for individuals. We set up five different categories from A to E for foreign talents who come and settle down here in our park. So those talents can receive between 800,000 to 4 million RMB as incentives to move here in our park. Um, the next advantage is our one-stop services. So we set up this uh, whole floor in our site city when you can do all your administrative tasks there. So from the registration of the company, 
to the tax registration, company bank account, handling your visa, everything is done in one same place. Um, you have also this um, property court when you can register your patents. We have uh, free legal services also for all the companies that move to our park. So when you settle down in our park, our park service team will also put you, um, help you to integrate in the park and put you in contact with all related industries of interest and potential collaborator as well that uh, are in our park to promote your products and your services in the park. Um, but also, while we develop all this um, industrial ecosystem, we also care, of course, about uh, well-being and lifestyle quality. So we're setting up lots of high-end convenience services, uh, leisure around the city. So we have also hospitals, we have first-class international schools that are set up here. We have a varieties of uh, sports facility, fields, fitness center. So we try to create also this a place that is uh, very nice to live in. And then the last project which is put in place now, uh, it's the International Cultural and Trade Center. So um, in order to build this international city that is sustainable and open, I think we also need to develop the culture side. and. Um, not only the industrial side. So one month ago, we had the inauguration of our cultural center. And uh, this place we built on three floors. So right now, the first floor, we have already uh, these massive libraries. We have a place for cultural exhibition. Right now, we have a very interesting exhibition with different uh, artists from different parts of China who made sculpture about uh, recyclable materials and trash they found on the beach. But the interesting thing is that on second floor, this floor is uh, made for all embassies, chamber of commerce or other institution to open liaison office there. So those liaison office will serve as link between their own country and our park and uh, to organize, of course, uh, lots of activities or programs to share culture as well, as we have this massive space for art exhibitions. And then the last floor will have um, this co-working space and a foreign incubator. So we will have this uh, program also to welcome startups, companies, uh, foreigners who want to really start very small companies and need helps and resources to develop in our park. Um, so this very exciting projects uh, right now in our SciTech city. Uh, if you need more information and want to get in touch with us, you can contact me, use my email address, phone number, or you can contact any other member of our international team. And um, I really believe, yeah, there are many, many opportunities right now in our SciTech city. Uh, but I think also, from my personal point of view, as, as foreigners moving in Hainan and, and um, enjoying all those new opportunities. It's also an opportunity to help to develop this place and help to make sure that this development go into a good direction and make sure that we develop this place into a sustainable city that is also culturally open. So um, you're very welcome to uh, come and visit us when the border will be open and it will be possible and it will be a pleasure to show you around. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Charlotte. Great overview. Again, what's so exciting is, is, is that we're not just talking about policies, but we're, we're not talking 10 or 15 years down the line, but we have actual action that's going on, actual investment, actual campuses that are being built there, and just how multi-dimensional uh, you know, uh, your campus is as well. A couple of things that I wanted to bring up, uh, particularly what is becoming very, very popular, uh, well, we haven't mentioned this throughout uh, not only China, but throughout the world, is esports, uh, is the electronic sports, the video game kind of sporting. Uh, it is taking over bigger audiences than Super Bowls, and uh, it's just absolutely stunning. And I know Sonia has uh, some esports, actually stadiums and campuses that are being built. Uh, is is esports part of your campus as well, Charlotte? 
Uh, right now it's uh, it's open. We have more traditional sports right now that have been set up there, but we hope in the future to have more and more different kind of pleasure activities to set up there. Yeah. And the uh, the one other thing that I wanted to bring up that there's actually a film that was uh, shot in uh, in uh, Sanya called uh, the Meg. And so that might be part of your uh, deep sea research there of the huge megalon shark with uh, Jason Strahan there. Did, did you ever meet Jason in the filming of this uh, movie? The, yeah, they were filming it in San Ohai, I remember a couple of years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so if you do want a, a little bit of an overview of, uh, of Hainan and Sanya, watch The Meg. It is a, kind of a, one of those uh, funny movies. But again, one of the interesting things talking about movies is that Sanya has an annual international film festival, uh, which is, you know, last year was like the only one that was done in the whole world. It's very, very popular, uh, very, very well attended and extremely, extremely well funded. Also, Hainan has the Miss World competition as well, as far as just you know, different types of uh, productions and uh, uh, productions and uh, international sort of recognition for events there. Okay, we are getting uh, close to our cutoff time, so let's get moving on again. Thank you so much, Charlotte, and, and thank you for your uh, not only your presentation but your follow-on uh, email and uh, and uh, website address. So let's talk about the Hainan's Green Path of Revolution for Sustainable Economic de Development. We've got Dr. Yang here from uh, Sanya University. She's also a project consultant at the Sanya Blue Ribbon Ocean Com Conservation Association. Uh, and again, we'll start talking about some of Hainan's creative policies and achievements in industrial, environmental, and cultural uh, conservation. Uh, good morning, Dr. Yang. Thank you so much for being with us. And uh, let's let, let's uh, delve into some of your interests in uh, uniqueness uh, on uh, on Hainan and uh, the sort of uh, green revolution. Okay. More. Good morning. Uh, so uh, I have to share my uh, Microsoft. Sorry. My share my slides. Uh, Dr. Yang, if it's easier, I can share your slides as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, sorry, I can't find out my slides. Uh, could you please, uh, could, could you please, uh, Push the button on the next page. I can't share the slide. Uh, I can, um, Dr. Yang, I can share your slides for you if, if that's all right. Sorry, sorry. I, th I think we lost Dr. Young. Um, while we're waiting for her to come back, John, maybe we want to jump to a question in the meantime. And John, I, I believe you're muted. If everyone goes to uh, the Q&A on the, on, on the right and look at the answered questions, uh, you can see some of the questions uh, that have been asked and then some of the, the answers that have been uh, that have been uh, added by our, our panel here. Uh, and so uh, we can take a little time right now. I don't need to read them to you, but again, go to the, uh, the Q&A uh, on your right bottom part of your screen and uh, you can read those there. 
So uh, Jason, what I, what I will do is that I will sort of move along and then when uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Yang comes back, then just uh, you know, give me a, give me sort of a heads up. Sure. So, so basically, I will uh, give you this PowerPoint, and I've got uh, this is a really kind of fun uh, overview of Hainan Island as a tourism destination. And again, uh, just to reiterate that Hainan gets 83 million domestic tourists, spending over 15 billion dollars. Uh, China has done a fantastic job in controlling the pandemic. They do not go, uh, they're not traveling overseas at all. So Hainan is really their only tropical destination. And so they have uh, really benefited from uh, and have a, a very uh, dynamic tourism industry there. Uh, the, a couple of things to note is that again, they're the world's biggest duty-free shopping capital there now. And again, in 2020, they opened up uh, basically going from $3,000 of duty-free a year in Hainan. And again, that's from uh, the domestic market. They can spend $15,500. They extended the categories to 30, from 38 to 45. And there's no uh, single purchase limit uh, that was removed. You could just see what happened. This is up to 2019. And then 2020, these are, we're just looking at months here. So spending rose 127% on year to year. So again, the duty-free shopping, not only for the goods, but for the building of duty-free shopping centers, there are billions of dollars going now in very, very high-tech and uh, uh, beautifully ar uh, you know, architecturally designed shopping centers there. Uh, the Hainan just opened up the world's largest man-made tourist island called the Ocean Flower Island. Uh, it's got the world's largest, it's a $24 billion investment, the biggest investment in tourism, uh, private invested in tourism uh, in the history of mankind. It's got the world's largest conference center. It's got a seven-star uh, peninsula hotel, 58 modern hotels there. Uh, a 1.4 uh, million square foot marine park, 23 recreation projects, 28 museums, 40 kilometers of coastline, uh, six style, stylish uh, commercial streets, uh, seven folklore performance squares and eight uh, themed food streets. Again, you can go through this in more detail, uh, do a Google search on Ocean Flower Island, and I've included a video there for you to watch at your own leisure. Is uh, Dr. Yang back yet? Yes, I'm back. Okay, sorry, let me uh, let me get out of here and I will turn it over to you uh, to, okay. uh, to start your, let's see, there we go. Sorry about that. Okay. So that was just a quick overview of um, of some of the tourism prospects that are going on, and then you can further research uh, my PowerPoint and look at some of the other options. So, Dr. Yang? Sorry, I just want to share my screen. Please wait a minute. So Dr. Yang, while you're doing that, let me do one last uh, screen share. Yes, here. I cannot share my slides. Jason, are you able to pull up her, her PowerPoint? Uh, Dr. Yang, I, I can I can present from you for you if you just want to look at your screen and, and follow along, if that okay, works. Okay, okay. Okay, yes. uh, just right before we do this, I have a quick assignment for my class who is watching right now. Uh, to get credit for watching the webinar, I want you to take a selfie of yourself right by your computer uh, watching this webinar. This lets me know that you are watching the webinar and so you can get credit for it uh, for our lecture today. Sorry for that little diversion there, but uh, this is my class time, so I have to keep my students engaged.
Okay, Dr. Okay, Yang, whenever you. you're ready. Uh, before my uh, present, uh, pr uh, before my uh, presentation, I just uh, answered the, the question two. Uh, I noticed that there uh, there's a person to ask a question whether the foreigner investors uh, need to find out the uh, the resident to uh, to start up their own business. Uh, as to my own uh, experiences, uh, I need uh, you you have to uh, find out the the uh, the, the residential uh, investors because uh, my partner uh, he is from uh, British so uh, so uh, uh, he is started his own uh, business with me uh, this uh, this policy is from four years ago but now I did I, I don't know whether these policies have been changed maybe the miss uh, miss Huang will answer this question further okay thank you very much okay uh, my topic is uh, green path for SED. Uh, I worked for a dean of the business school and a consultant, uh, as, uh, and a well, uh, and a volunteer for as, uh, for NGO. Uh, I just separate the whole contents into the four parts. I will skip the one and two parts over quickly because I just prepared the slides so much, so so many. So I will uh, focus on uh, focus on the part three. So uh, the next page, please. Next page, please. Yes, I just skip the basic uh, explanation and information here, especially the different process. Yes, part two. Yes, here. Uh, I will introduce the uh, Hainan pro uh, province. Hainan province is an island located in southernmost point of China with certain tropical and ocean resources such as mangroves, just like the picture above on this page. And macros, mud crabs, surfing bases, tourist towns, traditional villages, and tropical uh, industries. Hainan province has many hospitality na uh, nationalities settled over 2000 years. Uh, for example, Li, Miao, Zhuang, Wei, Tibetan, Yi, Man, and others. By the way, I'm I'm Man nationality. Okay, next page. Thank you. Uh, actually, in Hainan, there is uh, three major economic industries: tourism industry, surface industry, and uh, IT and high tech industry. So the next page. Let's skip this part. Over. Okay, tourism industry, the income from tourism industry occupied 60% 60, uh, 60 of the physical revenue tourism industry and recovered to total revenue 86 billion yuan after COVID-19. And high tech and high, uh, and IT and high tech industry. Uh, Hainan had attracted famous IT companies to build star, uh, smart cities up. Movie health, health uh, hotels and the tourism culture industries developed with ease of the tourists. And next page. Thank you. Okay, I uh, admitted uh, the second speaker, uh, Dr. Dao. He's right because before two two thousand and eight, two thousand eight, there's no specific development targets. So the passive development is driven by active tourists. And uh, the next year, there's the uh, international tourism in, uh, islands have been uh, implemented. And uh, based on the statistic, uh, yes, next page, that's okay. From the st uh, statistic department, I just withdraw this diagram for everyone. Uh, we know that the third sector is more than the other industries, obviously from GDP. So the surface qualities for tourists are improved. Okay, the next page, thank you. Okay, uh, by this, uh, yes, it's a little, it's a little boring <laughs> because we are using the uh, correlation uh, SPSS, this method, uh, try to, uh, uh, try to uh, modeling for uh, the relationships between the GDP and hotel services and computer services. So uh, there's the, a strong correlation among them. Okay, the next page. Thank you. Yes, there's the, uh, uh, we had attracted more than 50 investors, including industry leaders and uh, 
at Manuras from home and abroad. And there is the uh, International Offshore Innovation Building and uh, Fuxing Town Internet Innovation Park, an in, uh, industry park for high tech enterprises and incubator for innovative startups based in Haiko. And Alibaba has teamed up uh, with his own uh, uh, corporation uh, for, for the uh, services, smart services and e-commerce. E and the next page, please. Yes, in this part, I will uh, introduce that, uh, uh, sorry, I will introduce at least three types about the uh, interesting and creative cases. The first type is the next page. Yes, before explanation to, uh, to type one, I just want to ask the questions and uh, there's the answer on the right side. Uh, environments or pollution factories? The answer on, uh, had listed on the right side. To sacrifice the environment and the natural resources is not a good choice for uh, to future economic development. Why? Because it will be charged for a cost future, right? Okay, the second question, villages or big cities and why? The cities they consider to have two expanding scales up uh, to uh, bigger ones, which are designed all in the same key because of the flux of workers. So the re risk uh, reconstruction of the old cities to big ones will increase the local government safe expenses and, li and the liabilities and the living cost of the residents. So there's the only one question had been left, right? Environments and villages. The answer is always yes. So I will introduce the type one. This type one uh, of villages depend on conference and exhibition industries. Okay, next page, please. Okay, the first case, Wow Village is a node fishery village with exceptional natural and ocean, uh, and ocean resources. Environmental conservation and economic development are important sim similarly. So the success achieved by the, uh, by the autonomous county uh, is now regarded as the shining example within the uh, in, uh, island and is being emulated by other smaller villages like Wow Township which recently hosted a leading global economic forum. Okay, next page, please. So type two, uh, the development based on the environmental conservation. Uh, there, uh, there is their true story in SED, Shami Village. Shami Village is a small community faced to continental sea with views of upland sea, river, lake, and spring. It launched the environmental governance in 2018, relied on development about Wow Town. Uh, its archi uh, architectural characteristic is black roofs and white walls uh, with hui style. Mangrove Wetland Park and coconut groves attracted lots of tourists. Villagers participate and enjoy achievements in SED. I had listed the two 80% here. Uh, the first one, 80%, means the pollution and the right tide decreased 80% because the Shami village wet Wetland Park protects the one of the only existing natural mangroves in Hainan. So the, the uh, mangroves can help this village to decrease the red tide. Okay, the next one, the environmental and, uh, uh, sorry, uh, environmental natural conservation and income increase 80%. Shami Village managed to ach achieve, uh, achieve the acquired standards graded tourists from October 2019. In just three months, the villagers managed to attract uh, 820,000 uh, tourists and earn 2 million yuan from the tourist sector. Okay, the second. Yes, this is a freestyle, white roofs, black walls, with beautiful fresco and uh, family tattoo. Okay, next page. In type two, I will introduce you another uh, true story. Uh, this story is Malian village. Uh, this uh, it's about the blue story. From the old, uh, from, uh, from the, uh, uh, the picture, we notice that the Malian village is an old traditional fishery village over one, uh, 100 years, with, but with 30 and messy environments. But next year, 2015, uh, the Broca NGO, local NGO I worked for, 
uh, had uh, started to uh, uh, started to implement the garbage decrease plan, and uh, there's the uh, comprehensive uh, environmental governance. Uh, and uh, 2017, it has built up five BNBs for tourists donated and supported by UNEP and Broca. And next year, the revenues from BNBs help many fishery families to improve and increase co income. And 2019. Uh, the first uh, blue uh, blue book in China recorded successful blue story of Meilian village. And uh, by the way, one chapter of this book written by me. Uh, and uh, last year, by investigate uh, by in uh, sorry <laughs> by investigation, researchers, including me, are trying to introduce another sustainable economic industries for Meilian villagers. Okay, the next page. Yes, you can look look at. The, dif the differences between the uh, garbage, the garbage governance before and after. Okay, uh, let's skip this page over because I just showed the evidence about the cultural diversities. Okay, let's uh, let me show the final result about the ratios of growth rate on different nationalities. I just uh, use the uh, simple logic uh, for modeling. So uh, I just want to try to compare the different uh, the, the ratios about uh, the ratios of the growth rate on different uh, nationalities, such as the Han to Li, Han to Miao, Han to Zhuang, Han to Hui, and Han to others. These methods try to compare the different years, uh, the performance about ratios. So we can make uh, from this diagram, we can make some interesting conclusions here. The curves are similar to each other except one or two ratios. The differences of the growth rate between Han and other nationalities are almost on the same level. Okay, so the next page, please. Yes, this is the type three. Uh, developed based on cultural diversities, uh, Binlang Cove. Binlang Cove is located at the junction be, uh, between Sanya City and Baoting County. The cove is organized by three major district, uh, districts, uh, including Ganshi Li Village, Reinforced Miao Village, and Intangible Cultural Heritage Conservation Village. So the multicultural villages are situated in the same cove. Cultures in Binlang Cove are independent of each other and keep their own conventions, uh, uh, na uh, national uh, dresses and hair accessory, respectively. So we look at the, the picture uh, on the top, uh, on the side of the top, on the right, uh, sorry, on the right side of the top. The Li, the Li lived in the uh, houseboat. This is a houseboat because it looks like the shape of a house, right? made by thatches in the mud. And the Miao living in the stilted buildings. Uh, you can look at the, the picture uh, on the bottom. And the Li and the Miao villages uh, still keep primitive lifestyles. And the tourists can learn different languages from Li and Miao whose cultures are independent. Tourists can visit different villages and districts who maintain respective cultures and the lifestyles in same cove. It's very interesting. Okay, the next page, please. Yes, their handcrafts and their primitive lifestyles. And last of page, the old female, yes, the old female with, the, uh, with her beautiful family uh, tattoo, but the, to the young generation, they just uh, stop this uh, convention. The reason is very simple because they just, uh, it's very hard. And uh, the, uh, the young generation ha have the more, uh, Sorry, the, the, the young uh, generation has the more choices for their own life, for the future. Okay, so we just separate uh, the SED into the different stages. The first one, 80%, uh, most, of, uh, uh, most of the happy index of the communities and the family department. Uh, needs depends on the uh, uh, cultures, features, and environments. And the second stage, cultural Diversities are another characteristic for economic development. And the third stage combination can provide more chances and possibilities in business and economy. Culture features are foundations in economic uh, development. And the last page, R&D step. Uh, that means we need to, uh, uh, we need evolution. Okay, the, the last part, uh, 
this last the next page. This is the next page. Okay. Uh, Hainan Island would be developed with the uh, uh, SDN Nations 12th FTC. Since then, the province has uh, has been looking to play a bigger part in the opening up and reform process by charting development plans loaded with green, innovative efforts. Beautiful Village Villages is a project initiated by Hainan Pro Provincial Government in 2016 to improve infrastructure for the villages on Hainan Island without damaging the uh, environment and transform them into tourism spots with distinct characteristics. Okay, next page. So the in infrastructure upgrade has been gaining momentum since the launch of the FTC and is as much crucial for uh, local governments. Local governments uh, have accommodated companies and startups in three parts of the park depending on their business operations so that there would be a closer synergy and fruitful cooperation between big and small companies. Local governments open consumer market further and uh, business chances for tourist startup uh, companies and IT companies. Persistently, uh, persistently, not only inland capital, but abroad, local governments are implementing tax preference and the duty-free policies further actively. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank I you just, very much, uh, Dr. Yes. Young. And I think you added a great perspective of the how interesting that Hainan is, and not only yeah. in uh, the, the technology, the industry, the manufacturing, the shipping, the trade, but you brought in you know a lot of a great aspect of the ethnic minority culture of the rainforest, of uh, environmental, cultural, ecotourism, all a whole different pillar to the economy and the opportunities. And again, the, the focus on green technologies and uh, again, uh, understanding that uh, you can't take back a lot of uh, a lot of the development if you overdevelopment overdevelop. So a great kind of focal point on how that the green development really influences all of the decisions on what kind of new developments come in. Okay, so as we wrap up, I know Jason is uh, keeps uh, tapping his uh, wristwatch. I, I do want to give each one of our speakers just one last uh, chance to uh, say goodbye or uh, address anything. Uh, there's been some very good Q&A, which uh, we won't go into now, but Jason uh, will publish and you can see the answers that the our, our panelists do. But let me just open it up one last time for the panelists to uh, say goodbye and any uh, final words. Uh, Doug, why don't you start, please? Thank you so much, John and Jason, and to my fellow panelists. It was, uh, you know, I, I, China is a deep passion for me in terms of thinking about economic development and all of the wonderful stories. But I always enjoy being on on panels like this because I always learn so much. And so it was just wonderful hearing uh, all of the work and the analyses uh, that have gone into into this work. So thank you, thank you, thank you, John. For inviting me and thank you everybody for being a part of this with me and for listening uh, and, and learning from each other. Um, I'll just say again, I, I think it is, a, it is a trying time in the global political economy, but I really do believe that, that economic development and trade and business relationships are going to continue to save, save relationships like the important relationship between the United States and China. And so I just, I would love for us all to just continue to think about all of the creative ways that we can seek deeper understanding and deeper opportunity in, in growing together. So thank you, John, for having me. I think you're on mute still. Oh, sorry, Miss uh, Miss Wang, would you like to say some final words, please? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, from our own experience, uh, we deeply feel that uh, Hainan has already become a hotspot. So we are uh, looking forward to more companies from the heartland region uh, because I think uh, we the new policies here has uh, indeed made us into a uh, changing factor that open up new possibilities for your business. You can. Uh, 
come here and start maybe the vacation first, and maybe you can join in an expo to spend a few days and look at Hainan close up. And then you will try to find more possibilities and we are willing to serve you through this process. Great, thank you very thank much. You. And thank you for your time today and uh, have fun in uh, Beijing. It's always a fun place to hang out as well. Uh, Charlotte, would you like to say a couple final words too, please? Sure. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much for having me today. Uh, it was it was also very informative for me for many other perspective uh, on Hainan, and that um, yes, as Ms. Huang said, there are many opportunities here, and it's also apart from the opportunities, this amazing, beautiful beach destination. So even for tourism and just coming here on holiday is great. When you finish work and then you can just pass by home and then go to the beach and sip a coconut after <laughs> office hours, it's also like the best place to work. So I'm looking forward for more people to come and work here. Yeah, I think that, you know, you hit the nail on the head is that uh, the quality of life Number one is fantastic. The uh, engagement and opportunity is, uh, is fantastic. And what really means something to me, and I thank you because you mentioned it, is your kind of ability to make a difference. You know, there's so much going on and, and, and Hainan is just embracing the international talents and uh, you can make a difference in a place that has so much going for it. And it just is, is very exciting. And so thank you for uh, sort of taking it back to quality of life as well, it, working there. And that's a great opportunity of uh, having it as part of your everyday life. Great. Uh, Dr. Yang, would you want uh, yes. some final words here? Yes, uh, I'm so happy to, to, uh, to be invited to uh, participate in this uh, webinar. And uh, I'm so happy uh, to uh, work in Hainan over 10 years. And if you have any question, you can contact me, especially uh, the, uh, the about, uh, about the jobs, about uh, NGO, and uh, about the uh, uh, research in universities. And you can contact me uh, at, at any time. And uh, welcome to Hainan. <laughs> yes, and uh, although there is a uh, little trouble <laughs> from me, <laughs> right? It's my question, <laughs> it's my problem. So uh, yes, that's okay. You can contact me at any time. Thank you. Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. I, I would really, really want to thank uh, the Heartland uh, for their uh, uh, patience and having us go a bit over time. And I do want to recognize my students. We have class today and my students actually did a, a quick program or they did some research for you and I'll, I'll, I'll go buy it. But basically I asked them what the Heartland might have uh, an opportunity in Hainan as far as uh, being a supplier for something or being a tourism business or attraction. Uh, this one was uh, beer that everyone loves to drink beer there. And so Anheuser-Busch, uh, part of the uh, Heartland there. Uh, and then, you know, kind of a sports bar, Buffalo Wild Wings. As far as agriculture, beef uh, is really becoming very popular in, uh, in China. And so not only the uh, wholesale of beef, but also looking at uh, having businesses like Texas Barbecue or Cowboy Bar. Let's look at uh, uh, liquor, uh, very important for duty-free uh, sales there, but looking at uh, Tennessee whiskeys or you've got uh, Tito's uh, Vodka out of, uh, out of Texas uh, as far as a supplier. But they thought like a Nashville or a Beale Street or a 7th Street Austin kind of honky-tonk type of attraction would be really a way of, of bringing an American culture in there with, uh, with music and uh, food and uh, cuisine and dance. Uh, again, beer, very important, uh, bars everywhere. Looking at bringing in uh, different supplies of uh, alcohol, I mean, of uh, agriculture and having uh, the, the canning business done in, in Hainan. Uh, helicopters, uh, again, looking at uh, the production of helicopter. And then lastly, the flight service, uh, new energy for uh, electric vehicle auto parts. As I said, Tesla has an innovation center there. And uh, I think within the next 10 years, they want all cars to be uh, 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 electric or non-gas. There's a huge, again, fashion uh, types of uh, businesses and stores as far as the duty-free. Uh, Boao with uh, the medical equipment, it is, there is a pilot medical 
uh, zone there, which uh, is absolutely amazing. So wellness tourism, very big suppliers, of dairy products. Uh, the yachting industry is is a big focal point of the tra free trade port. And so you should look in if you are part of the yachting industry there, uh, supplying uh, jets. Here is a, uh, a video of the Hainan International Consumer uh, Products Expo that uh, Ms. Huang had mentioned. Uh, and I think as we're looking for action, as I'm wrapping this up, uh, that that's gonna be probably in April or May of next uh, year. And hopefully we can have a physical travel there from the heartland. If not, we should be able to figure out some sort of heartland representation uh, there. And so I think if, if I have one recommendation as an action item is that we should put that on the agenda on how we could participate from the heartland in the Hainan International Consumer Products Expo. And then lastly, for my students that are watching, as I said, make sure you take a uh, quick uh, snapshot of yourself. Make sure that we, you have your screen there as far as, uh, so I know you're watching the webinar, and then I will have you posted on Canvas so you get credit for the lecture. So that's it. And I really want to recognize uh, Governor Holden. I want to thank him for all the help and uh, particularly for Jason and Min. We've worked on this for six uh, months and uh, we finally got it all together. Uh, you, uh, you guys have been very, very patient. And then uh, again, uh, to all of our speakers, uh, fantastic job. I look forward to continuing to work with you in the future uh, as we continue to promote Hainan and really get the heartland involved there. Jason, do you want to uh, say some last words? Um, well, thank you again to our panelists. Thank you, John. Uh, we look forward to continuing this momentum. Um, great webinar, everyone. We'll, uh, we'll close out, but uh, thank you everyone again. Excellent. Thank everyone for your time. And Jason, I uh, look forward to having things posted on, the, uh, on your website. Will do. Thanks okay. again. Take care.